Did you pay attention to what you just sang? If you lead me, Lord, I will. What if the Lord asked you to do something really big? What if he asked you to uproot your family and quit your job and go someplace maybe you visited when you were visiting a big mouse, but otherwise you really hadn't thought about living there? What if, what if God asked you as a Minnesotan to go someplace with a lot of heat and humidity? You're going to hear some testimonies this morning of folks who heard the still small voice of the Lord And they said, yes. We've got several families that are joining us. One of those families is from North Carolina. He's a pastor. He's actually in the pulpit this morning, so he couldn't be here physically, although they were here a few weeks ago when we had our our, uh, training. But I'd like to introduce you to Michael and Denise Brinkley and their four boys, and they're going to begin our time together on video. I'm Michael. I'm Denise. I'm David. I'm 11. I'm Caleb. I'm 9. I'm Michael. I'm seven. And our nine-month-old son, Evan, is asleep right now. Well, the Bible shows us that God speaks to his people in many ways. Jesus even taught that my sheep know my voice and they follow me. And so how do we hear about going to Oviedo, Florida from God? Well, interesting story that started over three years ago when a man from another church gave me a prophetic word saying that God was going to give me an offer in Virginia, and it was of him, so I was to take it. It was more details to the prophecy, but, you know, I didn't know how to take it at the time, so I I just let it go. And for three years, uh, I didn't see anything come about it. But then last August, the Kimball family came down for vacation, and they asked us to come up and see him uh, in Williamsburg. And so when we went there, I was asking a question to John, well, why are you in Virginia besides vacation and seeing friends? And he said, we have another agenda, actually. Uh, we have a list of 30 people uh, that we are praying about because God has put on our heart to start a church plant in Oviedo, Florida, and we're going around talking to them. Now, understand this, John never thought about putting us on the list because I'm a pastor already in Northeast North Carolina. Everything's going well. We're healthy. We love the the, uh, uh, people here. We're just having a great time. And so he didn't consider us. But as soon as he looked at us and with a twinkle in his eye, he said, Michael, there's always room for the Brinkley family to join us if that's what God wants for, uh, for us. And so what happened as soon as he said that, Uh, God spoke to my spirit and said, I want to be, I want you to be on that team. And I, and immediately he began to uh, help me understand that this is what the prophecy was about. And I began to argue in my mind with God. I said, God, uh, I, I thought this prophecy was about maybe becoming a pastor in Virginia some years down the road or something like that. And he says, no, it was never an offer to be a a pastor or to have a church in Virginia. I said the offer would be made in Virginia. See, John is living in Minnesota. We're living in North Carolina. And Michael, you went on vacation to Williamsburg, Virginia, where he made you an offer. And though it was half jokingly from him, it is just full of passion from me. So this is it. So from that moment on, I knew that this was from God. But um, God started answering all kinds of prayers of confirmation for me. Even my devotions, he began to give me that second and third witness. My devotions like I started flipping over to where Abraham was called by God to go to a place that he'd never been before. And Moses, uh, God was speaking to Moses from the burning bush about setting his people free and all of those things. These devotions just took a different turn, and that was just more confirmation about where God was leading us. I was um, excited to see God working and know that he's asking us to join him in Florida, as well as he asked uh, us to join him where we are now. Um, I knew that wherever God called Michael, he was calling me also, because we are 
um, a husband and a wife, and our family is one, united together. Um, but God did give me, personally, some um, different confirmations as well. Uh, one happened early on. I called a friend and just hadn't talked to her in a while. And she said, before anything else in the conversation almost, you're going to move, aren't you? And I was very shocked and has said, how did you know that? But the Lord had spoken it, just spoke it to her spirit. And, and um, she was right. And then uh, months later, a second friend, I went to visit her. I texted her and said, would you be available for a visit today? I wanted to see her, talk to her about a number of things. And one of them was to tell her that we would be moving. Um, but before I brought that subject up, I, I said, um, I did have something else I wanted to tell you today. And she said, I know you're leaving. And I thought, how did she hear that? And uh, But she didn't hear from any person. She said that God had spoken it to her spirit when I texted her. And she knew then that we were going to be leaving. And again, I was shocked. But God just said, um, He's, you know, this is where I want you to be. This is my will for you. And we're excited to be a part of his will. Morning. I am, as most of you know, but some of you don't, I'm Steve Olson. It's my wife, Diane. And uh, I don't know how you've ever heard the Lord, Lord speak to you. Um, uh, some people call it intuition. Some people call it different things. But uh, our journey is very similar to Michael's and Denise's. And uh, this all started about a year and a half ago in February. Um, John had asked me to pray for him. And he said, uh, Catherine and I are, are in the midst of a decision, and we're, we're just kind of wrestling with it. And I drive truck for a living, so I have a lot of time to go down the road and pray. So I was praying, and uh, the Lord just uh, said, uh, in my spirit, as Michael was saying, um, John's going to be called to a church. And I said, oh, really? And he had sent this text to me for the prayers. So I text back to him when I got to my destination, um, where are you being called to? And he texts back to me, how did you know? <laughs> and that was kind of the first little marker that the Lord was in this. And uh, for your information, we've owned a timeshare in Orlando since 1985, so this was not a place that was foreign to us. So the Lord had prepared us for many, many years for this area. And I am a true Minnesotan. My son, our one son lives in South Carolina. I've told him I'd never move down south. Be careful what you say you'll never do. <laughs> um, the second marker uh, we had was we were vacationing in, in March then. Uh, that was in February. In March, we were down in Florida meeting my, uh, our son and, and grandkids. And uh, my son is a, is a uh, detective. And he's about as big as uh, Travis is, who will be following me. He's a big boy. And, uh, and uh, we were sharing this vision that the Lord had put on our hearts, and we were just praying about it. We weren't sure if we were supposed to go or not. And um, he looks at me, and he says, what are you going to do, Jonah? <laughs> <laughs> he already knew the call. I didn't. <laughs> so that was, the, that was the second marker. And uh, the third one is we had made the decision, and we were just trying to see how the Lord was going to work. And... Uh, as you know, I'm a fisherman. I love to fish. Uh, we've owned for many years a, a salmon boat on Lake Michigan. Um, some of the people in this congregation have been up there fishing with us. And uh, that's my passion. And, and we had made many plans. <laughs> Careful what you plan on in retirement, too. Um, we had made many plans to uh, start a bed and breakfast up there. And I would uh, get my captain's license and charter on the side and, and do things like that. And we had kind of pursued that for many years had a lot of doors closed on us as we were pursuing properties and things like that. And uh, so when we had made the decision to go to Palmwood and, and start to or, Orlando, Oviedo, um, I just start, we just started praying about the Lord, you know, making it happen because we didn't know how this was going to work. And uh, the one concern I had was the boat. That was going to be a hard thing for me to give up. And, and uh, every, all of us have little things that we kind of hold on to that we really enjoy. And... Uh, by coincidence, and by the way, I don't believe in coincidence. Um, 
the last year, last summer, uh, we had a new slipmate that we keep our boat in Bailey's Harbor, and we had a new slipmate that was uh, uh, just happened to have the same boat that we have. Got to know him. He had bought a place in town. He was living up there, and but the boat had an inboard, and we have outboards. And uh, he said, "I've been looking for a boat like yours forever, and I couldn't find one." And got to know him very well. Took him fishing over the summer. And uh, last winter, when I, we were starting to get things in order, I was going to put the boat on the market and have to go through a broker. And uh, I just kind of, my spirit said, call him, make sure, you know, if he wants or not. Called him over the phone, he said, sold. <laughs> Didn't even ask me what the price was. <laughs> so, um, three times you're out. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, Lord, I get it. So, um, your prayers will be answered if you, if you really pray with, with conviction and belief that the Lord is in everything that, that we do, even though we don't always see it. Thank you very much. Well, I'm Ella Marie Akowitz. This is my husband, Travis, and our son, Daniel, is actually already in Florida at Grandma and Grandpa's. He flew down by himself this week, so that was traumatic for Mom, not for him. So <laughs> he made it. He's smiling. I got tears coming, but we're okay now. <laughs> um, anyway, about the, the whole thing with Florida, when we were sitting in Sunday school and John had passed out that they were leaving, um, Lee, a lady in our Sunday school class, said, said, would you ever consider Florida? I'm like, no. Been there 10 years, not doing it again. Dealt with the humidity, the love bugs, the fire ants, the gators, all that. No, we're done. <laughs> so um, time went on, and then Minnesota winter hit, and we started thinking, maybe we should reconsider. <laughs> <laughs> so our process took a little longer than most, and I just kind of chalked it up because Travis turned 40 this year, so had to process it a little longer. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> and if any of you know Travis, <laughs> there's more to that, but um, the Lord started working and started, you know, that little small voice. You, know, you need to start thinking about this. So now he gets to do the serious part. Yeah, I, I think my middle name is processor or thinker. So it, uh, it, it took a little bit longer in just understanding what God's will is. Um, but, I, but I also think of, um, you know, some of the songs that we sang this morning. Uh, just following God's voice um, and his direction. Um, one, one of the things I, th I think that God has continued to lay on my heart is um, one of the ministries, I think, that we're called uh, to be a part of in Palmwood. Um, and, and, and this started um, probably when I was 16. God help me remember this, this, this story. Um, and as a young person, I was struggling what, you, you know, you asked these, I, I was asking my, my parents this deep philosophical question, what is, what is the purpose of life? And I, I, I remember my, my mother's comments um, kind of to this day, and she said, I don't know. And I'm like, I'm like thinking to myself, how, how, does, how do your parents not know the answer to this? And if they don't know, what am I supposed to do with my future and my life? And so for the next year, I was on a collision course just to understand this, uh, but it was, it was full of searching and full of self-destructive behavior. And I eventually was sitting in a psych ward, a nurse had shared with me the gospel, and as I was thinking about this the last couple of days, John 10.10 10 came to me. I came that they, might that, that they might have life, and they might have it abundantly. And, and, and that's really what is at the center and is at the driver of Palmwood, is that, is that we would give abundant life to people that we would disciple them and an answer their questions. Fast forward, um, I have, 
I've been in business uh, pretty much my whole adult life. And one of the struggles I've always had is how do I connect um, my life, my spiritual life with my work? And what I do at work, does it really matter? Is that really ministry? Can, can I really affect people uh, for Christ at work? And, and I really struggle with that because every e- email that you answer, everything that you, um, you sort of do at work, um, you see the struggles of people at work personally, uh, the person that has cancer, um, uh, the person uh, that, that's having struggles with their kids at home, um, all of that just becomes um, kind of a part of life. And then I look at Ecclesiastes 1 and you just see um, King Solomon say, vanity of vanities, all this is vanity. And, th- and at times that can be depressing, but I think I felt like that. And, and, and I felt like we need to help people understand that our work is our calling, whether it's uh, in full-time Christian ministry or if it's a person in business, or a nurse, or a doctor, a lawyer, whatever it is. And that the other part of our service is, is helping our neighbor, helping that person at work, um, and providing value, and, and, and just really serving them. And so God has really impressed this on my heart because of the struggle that I've gone through with this and trying to think think through this, but I think that this is one of the ministries that God has for me at at Palmwood. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lauren. I think everybody knows me, but um, they're my parents. So I was told that they were going to Florida, and I was like, oh, that's cool for you. I don't know if I'm coming yet. So it took me a very long time. I wasn't sure for a very long time. I was waiting for a big aha. You're supposed to go to Florida. Here's your bam, your thunder, your lightning that tells you you're supposed to go or stay or whatever. Um, Instead, over the past year or so, God has just slowly grown my excitement to be part of the adventure that is Palmwood Church. Um, so at first, not knowing it was, if it was a waste of time for me or not, I started going to the weekly meetings that they were having on Thursday nights for Palmwood. And um, at first, they were just talking about how to plant a church in general, and there were other people that have decided now that they're not going to Palmwood there, and then we started talking specifically about Palmwood. And um, at the same time, I was still growing in my walk with God through the School of Discipleship that we've had here this year at Woodbury Community and through meeting with my um, mentor, Melissa Tapperson. Um, And so that was great. I was talking with them. And over and over through the School of Discipleship, through the meetings for Palmwood, through meeting with my mentor, through talking to people here at church, this same message kept coming over and over. We're supposed to love God, love people, make disciples. You've heard that plenty of times here. Um, but it just kept popping up. So um, one of the examples of that is in the School of Discipleship, we read a book called um, Not a Fan by Kyle Eidelman, which encourages you to think about whether you are an enthusiastic admirer of Christ or whether you're actually ready to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus and do what he's commanded you to do, Um, to think about whether you really love God because he says in his word multiple times, if you love God, you will obey him. Um, so then we also read a book called Just Walk Across the Room by Bill Hybels. Um, it encourages you, his words are, to live in 3D. Um, the Ds are discover people's stories, develop relationships, and discern next steps. And so I started to implement that in my life. I started to try to do this with people, to love people this way. Um, and I discussed the books and concepts with um, my mentor. I discussed them with other people, with my parents. I began trying to apply these, and I found that the way that Jesus has asked us to live is a little bit addicting. It's kind of fun. So that was exciting. Um, And so this year, loving God, loving people, making disciples has become and is becoming not just an ideal, um, but more of a way of life, that I, I want this to be the way I live 
every day, no matter what I do with my life, whether I'm suffering through substitute teaching for a year or <laughs> doing something else. But um, so this is what Palmwood is already all about. It's about loving God, loving people, making disciples, um, helping to help people love Jesus so that they want to spread the this awesomeness around. Um, so I'm very excited to be part of part of Palmwood um, and all that that entails um, for as long as God has me there. So. Well, we are the Kimballs, and apparently we have the gift of instigation. <laughs> Just a little bit about our testimony on this. Um, it's, a, it's a very long story. Many tributaries come into this river, and I'm not going to give you everything. We're just going to give you the nutshell. If you'd like to hear more, we would be very happy to share at other times with you. Just uh, feel fr free to ask. But this adventure for us began at the foot of Pike's Peak, of all places. Uh, in July of 2012, we were at the Four Seas annual meeting for our denomination, had had a wonderful week, and we decided we wanted to stay an extra week in that beautiful part of the country and just be tourists. And so I'm, I'm in the hotel room, everybody else is asleep, I've got the windows open, I'm looking at Pikes Peak because our hotel is right at the base of Pikes Peak. And as I'm doing my devotional time, God begins to whisper, church planting. And like other stories that you've heard, I began to argue with the Lord because I am not a church planter. I have uh, been my entire career on the other end of the spectrum helping churches turn around that are, are waning and dying. And in fact, that's what I do for a living for the four C's. And, uh, but uh, he just kept at it day after day after day, and I began to talk with people, and they began to confirm uh, while this was happening, the four C's, our denomination, is going through a major restructuring. It's something that we're very excited about, but it's something that directly impacts my job. Uh, in fact, on January 1st, I will go from 40 hours with the four C's to 15 hours with the four C's per week. And so uh, it's very good that God has provided me another job because uh, that, that was going to happen whether I was going to Florida or not. Um, my ministry heart for the church... Uh, my entire career since uh, accepting Christ back in 1986 has been for people like me who grew up in the church, but a church that never told them about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And on the night that I accepted my calling, the Lord spoke very clearly to me and said that he was calling me essentially back as a missionary to go back into the American church, into those congregations that, that are very religious but don't know Jesus. And I've been spending my my. 25 plus years of, of pastoral ministry doing that and now it's it's just another nuance on that same calling because as you'll hear those of you that are going to be down at lunch we're going to talk about this the majority of the people we're going to be connecting with in central florida are what we call de-churched they're people who have left the church because of bad experiences and and it's just one more facet to this beautiful gem that uh, that we are undertaking as a ministry um, for the two of us, we, uh, in, in May, it was Memorial Week uh, last year, we went down for the first time to Florida, and we've been praying and praying and praying, Lord, just give us guidance, because we really don't know what we're doing. You know, I've never planted a church before, this is a new adventure. We got on the plane, and we're in, in a seat, Catherine's in the middle seat, I'm on the aisle seat, and there's this gentleman next to the window. We hadn't even gotten off the tarmac in Minneapolis yet. And uh, the guy looks at Catherine, and he says, you two going all the way to Orlando? And yeah, we're going. What are you going for? I'm thinking, oh, great. I've had these conversations as a pastor. You get on an airplane, they ask you what you do. As soon as you tell them, then there's silence for the rest of the, the, the trip. But not this guy. This guy happened to be going to what is now one of our partner churches in the area down there. And uh, we had never heard of Avito, Florida. It was not even a, a town we'd, we'd ever heard of before. But this gentleman sitting there said, oh, if you're going to be planting a church, you need to look at Avito, Florida. And that was the first time we'd ever heard the name of the town. And he's just going on and on. He doesn't live in Avito, but he says it is the, the sweetest town. It's, uh, it, it's actually older than Orlando. Um, it's got its own little downtown section. It's, just, it's, it's a, kind of a little self-contained community. It's beautiful. And he was just really cheerleading for Avito. So as soon as we dropped our bags at the, the uh, hotel... We got in our rental car, 
we had to get some groceries for the week, and so we decided we'd go shopping at Walmart in Aveto. And so we drove up the, the Greenway to Aveto and began interacting. And, and even at that moment, I think, we began to fall in love with the town that eventually, we didn't know at that time, but it would eventually be our, our target city. Um, the other thing that, that has been a surprise to me is that, you know, planting a church and, and being a missionary are apostolic roles that you, you go out and you start something new for the kingdom of God. I've never, ever seen myself as, as an apostolic personality. Um, and yet, as this has been going on, I've had person after person after person go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, they've, they've seen me as, as this, this apostolic person with the, the various ministries that I have started, the various new things I've done in various churches, starting new various ministries within the 4C denomination. And so, as I say, the gift of instigation apparently has been there all along, and I just hadn't been paying attention to that, but even my mentor was one that, that uh, affirmed that in me. Another confirmation for us is that very quickly God surrounded us down in the Metro Orlando area with lots of experts, friends, and partners that we, a year ago, we didn't even know. And we've got 23 different people, pastors, church planters, people working at Campus Crusade, just various organizations that we call friends now that we didn't even know a year ago that are excited about us coming and are going to partner with us. In fact, there's one church in Altamont Springs that I have yet to, to make the, for, the formal connection with, but I've talked with their pastor. And this is a church that when they were planted about 15 years ago, they had a vision for what they call their scaffolding ministry. And they literally loan people out from their congregation to church plants to give them the critical mass necessary to get up and rolling. And then the people go back to their home church once the church is up and rolling. I mean, it's just, it's amazing the things that, that God has, has laid out there for us. Um, God's team coming together. You know, having never done this before, when Catherine and I uh, said yes to Jesus, um, we said, okay, well, how do we start? And nobody really gave us any guidance at the front end, and so we said, well, let's sit down with a legal pad of paper and start writing down all the names of the people that we think maybe would join us on this adventure. And we came up with 72 different names. Michael in, in the video said 30. It was actually 70-plus names that we had, and it might have been 30 by the time we talked to, to Michael and Denise. But uh, every person that we ended up talking to said no. And we came to the end of our list and we're like, okay, this is not going really well. And, and that very week was the week that Steve and Diane said, where are you going? And God began to sovereignly build the team. We now have 18 people who are joining us on this list. And that does not include the church planter families. We hope are going to join us that we can train and equip and then send out to begin multiplying because our vision for Palmwood Church is that Palmwood Church would be planting churches by year three. So it's, it's a very aggressive ministry vision that we have. Um, some answers for our younger kids that we have concerns for. Um, Josiah, some of you who know Josiah know that he's been wrestling this year um, with whether or not to return to Crown and we weren't really sure that was going to be a possibility. Uh, the door has opened wide for him to return back to Crown College this fall, and he has now announced to us that he's a Minnesotan and he's not going to join us on this adventure. But we know he's got a good home church and lots of families here in the area, and so we're comfortable with that. But that's a real answer to prayer because he's taking steps of independence where he's going to be exercising this, and now he's got a passion for school that I can tell you he has never in his life had before, and we're very, very excited about that. And then for Anna Jean... Um, this whole idea of us moving away rather than, you know, usually the kids go away to college. In our case, it's the parents that are moving away, whether she would be in Florida. And we've looked at schools all over the country for her. And uh, she finally settled on Liberty University down in Lynchburg, Virginia. That's a place where we actually have friends that live in Lynchburg, two different families that we love. So there's people there. If something would happen, if she needed somebody right away, we've got people we can call. So there's great parental confidence there. But then as I got word that my job was going to be reduced significantly, we began to think in terms of finances because we've helped the kids a little bit with school and what's this going to look like. And Anna Jean, if you haven't heard, is getting a free ride to Liberty University. Lock, stock, and barrel, the whole thing. So confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. Now, if you know me, you know that I don't worry about a lot, but I always worry about money. And so that's, that's just something that's it's always there. It's always been there. And so you'd think that an $87,000 gift, because that's what that scholarship is worth at Liberty University, would have 
convinced me that God's got this under control. No. So um, still wondering, okay, Lord, where's this provision going to come? Because we have to start our fundraising and these kinds of things. And uh, two weeks ago, while I was in New Hampshire, I got word that we have a church in, uh, Vermont, in, yeah, in Vermont that is uh, struggling. It's possibly going to become a legacy church, may become a restart. They're, uh, they're down to about 12 people on a Sunday, but they have a significant endowment, and they caught a vision to support Palmwood Church. They're giving $10,000 a year for three years to get us up and running. So while I will admit to you I haven't really stopped worrying, I'm getting the hint that maybe God's got this under control. And then we've had several messages um, from the Lord, and one of those is one that I'm going to talk about today. Do you want to add anything now, or do you want to just share later? Okay. My wife is not a public speaker, so. So anyway, th- we have, we've had numerous words from the Lord, numerous confirmations, uh, lots and lots of things where we've just stepped back and said, my goodness, there's no way you, could, you couldn't write this the way that this has unfolded. Um, and we are so excited to be on this adventure and to have the partners that we've got going with us. You've heard from some of them. Um, pray for Jason and Kristen Nigren. They are also on our list. They're, they're wrestling with, with what their participation is going to be. Jason actually had a testimony to give this morning. Krista's working at the hospital today, so she couldn't be here. And Jason woke up this morning with what we think may be strep throat, and he's feeling really bad. So please pray for his health because he's not feeling really good today. But one of those messages that God gave us early on was from Jeremiah 29.7. And uh, we'll take a look at that passage as our sermon here this morning. But basically, if our team is going to uproot and move to Florida, we better hear from the Lord, don't you think? If we're going to move away, it's probably important that we're, we're hearing from the Lord. And uh, by unpacking this verse that God gave me several months ago for our church plant, I think we can get a glimpse of God's heart for Avito, Florida. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus... This is all about you, and it is all for you. And uh, we as a team have committed our lives, literally, and our families to you, um, our careers, everything. And uh, as we take these steps over the next two months, three months, uh, we're going to be relying on you, some of us, more than we ever have before in our lives. And uh, Jesus, we're confident in that. Today we pray that we can spill that confidence over to these, your people at Woodbury Community Church, our sending church, that they can not only be excited about what's happening in Florida, but that they also can experience your call on their lives, that Jesus, you will speak to them in their spirit. They will hear that still small voice, and it will be a big request, and it will be a scary request, and it will require an act of utter faith. Father, we pray that this day is not just a great celebration of Palmwood Church, but is a day where you lovingly draw a line in the sand for your children in this church, and you call them to big and exciting things, and that this becomes a place that doesn't just send one team to Florida, but is sending teams all over the world for your glory and your gospel. Use me this day, Father, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean once again so that I can be your vessel. Move me out of the way that I might decrease and you will increase and that your word will be heard, understood, and applied. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One simple verse, but oh, what a profound impact it has had. Jeremiah, in his prophecy, chapter 29, verse 7, simply tells the people, also, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Now, this is not to say that we feel like we're going into exile, going to Florida, Um, although I have a feeling in July and August some of the Minnesotans may feel that way next year. We'll see. Catherine and I are from that area, and so we're, we're more used to the weather. But... God took his people, the, if you really understand the Old Testament story, yes, it was exile, but while they were in exile, he used them incredibly for his kingdom purposes. And we feel like we're being called the same way, that we're being taken to a place we didn't expect to be used of God for his kingdom purposes. And there's, there's two components to this verse that I want to very quickly uh, just look at here, and then we'll, we'll finish the story over brunch at 1145. 
But just two components here. The first is God's people are called to seek the peace and prosperity of the city. Now, that phrase, peace and prosperity, is all wrapped up actually into one word, and it's the word shalom. Many of you have heard that word shalom before, and you know that it, it means peace in, in Hebrew, but maybe what you don't realize is that shalom is not just a term. It's not just a word. It actually is a concept for life. And so God's people are to be an instrument of shalom. They're supposed to be an instrument of peace, perfect peace. And it's actually defined this way, completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, safety, health, prosperity, and friendship. All of those things are wrapped up in this one word, shalom. And many times you will hear uh, Hebrew people talk, in ter- talk about shalom shalem, which is perfect peace. In other words, they understand we're supposed to have these things in perfection in our lives. Well, Palmwood Church is called to be a people of God who are moved to a place that God is calling us to be instruments to produce, to foster this shalom shalam in Oviedo, Florida, and also spilling over into Winter Springs, Orlando, and Chuliota, which are the surrounding towns. What does that mean? How do we do that? Well, it's not rocket science, friends. Jesus is very clear in his word what the nuts and bolts are to do that. The problem is we don't always do it very well. Number one, simply to be good neighbors. You know, one of the things that that I have struggled with uh, here since we've lived in Minnesota is really getting to know all of my neighbors on the cul-de-sac. We have some that we're very, very close to. We have one family on our cul-de-sac we have never met, and we've lived there eight years. And you all know that that's true, that that's a, a normal thing. Some people just don't want to be known. An architect friend of mine once said that, he kn- that this happened in the mid-1980s, and, and house architecture, if you look at housing designs, it actually shows when the shift occurred. We went from large front porches, which are community-oriented, to large decks off the back in a private backyard with a, a privacy fence. And we literally broke community when that happened in many major city areas. And so we are going to have to go down. We're, we, are, we have a plan in place. We're going to go down, and the very first thing that we're going to do as this team is be good neighbors. We're going to actually work hard to get to know who the people are on our street, our block, and our cul-de-sac. And yes, we know some of them won't want to be known. Can't do anything about that. But the ones that do, we're going to be good neighbors to. We're going to offer genuine friendship, not just acquaintance level, superficial stuff, but really look at what, how the Bible defines what friendship is and build that kind of friendship. We want to be instruments of peace and safety wherever we can, especially advocating for those who cannot advocate for themselves. And we're going to talk during the, the luncheon time about some of that advocacy we'll do down there through a partner ministry we already have a, a relationship with down there called Hope Incorporated that is one of the most well-run benevolent services I have ever seen in my life. And uh, they've, they've got just a phenomenal impact in Seminole County. We want to participate in Christ-centered welfare, and that will also be through the efforts of Hope International or Hope Incorporated while we're down there. We want to promote health. We want to promote everything from emotional and physical and spiritual health in discipleship to even more formal health-related type impact through hospital chaplaincy, And if Krista ends up going nursing, uh, you heard uh, Travis' testimony. It was while he was in the hospital that he heard the gospel. And, you know, a lot of our hospitals today don't allow that anymore. But we want to have some relation, build some kinds of relationships where the gospel can slip in under the radar wherever it's possible. We want to do everything we can to help our neighborhoods and our communities be truly blessed and to prosper. Uh, Little things like picking up trash while you're jogging in the morning to uh, formal things like block parties and other things where we can really build that kind of camaraderie and community. And, uh, of course, all of this is also to be regular in prayer for our city, which leads us to the second part where God says we are to pray to the Lord on behalf of the city. And this is the Hebrew word paulal, which literally means to mediate. It's the word that is used in the Old Testament for intercessory prayer, where one goes 
and stands in the gap between a holy God and a people who desperately need him. And we know that we are called to be that instrument in Avito, Florida, where we will stand in the gap. We will be the mediators between God and these people, many of whom have heard of him but have had a very, very bad experience with the church. I'm going to share some statistics over lunch just to to give a very real picture. But just so you understand, where we are going, more than half of the people consider themselves to be Christians but have no relationship with any church whatsoever and have not for many years. So we're talking in the neighborhood between 50 and 60,000 people just in our city alone down in Florida that have no connection with the church and yet call themselves Christians. And we're learning many of them have never even heard the gospel. So it's, it's really a, a major concern. So how do we do this intercessory prayer and how do we mediate? Well, the first thing is we have to get to know the region, our city, and our neighbors well enough so we can pray intelligently for them, so we can exercise the power of God on their behalf every single day. It's taking intercessory prayer walks in our neighborhoods. So when I go out running in the morning, I'm not just running, but I'm praying for every house I pass every single day, interceding every single day. Um, building key community relationships so that we can pray not only for the leaders in our town but with the leaders in our town. I fully intend to go and get to know the mayor and the fire chief and the police chief and these people when we get down there and build relationships with them and pray with them, whether they're Christians or not. It does not matter. They've always got things that they would, would like prayer for. Praying for our schools, praying for first responders, praying for God's anointing upon the gospel ministry. And when we say the gospel ministry, it's not just about Palmwood Church. It's about the church of Avito. And there are some phenomenal churches in the area. There are also some churches that are really struggling. We want to pray that God's anointing will fall upon his people, regardless of their denominational stripe or their, their tradition and background. We want to pray that the gospel will will build up more and more partner ministries and churches in the town and that we can actually stand together as a united front for the kingdom of God. And then standing in the gap between God and people who desperately need him, that God's spirit will move and birth peace and prosperity in the hearts all around the town for Jesus. And we understand exactly what he says here. Uh, He says, "Pray pray to the Lord for it because if the city prospers, what's the last phrase? You also will prosper. And from the very beginning, as God gave me this verse, I understood our success is measured differently than the world measures success. Our success in this church plant and all the daughter churches that birthed out of this over time rests on whether we do these two things well. Whether we seek the peace and prosperity, the shalom of the city, and whether we regularly, daily, constantly stand in the gap and mediate and intercede for the people who desperately need Jesus. I can tell you, if you haven't seen it already, our team is very excited to be on this adventure. I'd be lying if, we weren't, if I didn't say we were also maybe a little scared <laughs> because there's anxiety of the unknown. But we're going down together, be all landing at different times between now and probably December 31st. And uh, our goal is to hopefully double our size by Easter time of next year and do a soft launch. And then once all the snowbirds come home at the end of the summer to do our formal public launch in the fall of 2015, if the Lord blesses that, that plan. Um, one last thing, we received a formal confirmation that we're on the right track this last Wednesday. I received from my boss, Ron Hamilton, the former pastor of this church, a letter. And I'm thinking, oh boy, this is either really good news or really bad news, one or the other. And as I opened it up, it was the formal letter from the Conservative Congregational Christian Conference Credentials Committee that Palmwood Church has officially been accepted. We are now a church, a church in development with the four C's. And I would just invite you, if you can, at 1145, come down and join us. There's a, you can smell it. There's a wonderful brunch being made. Uh, we're going to be down there, and I'm going to give the full vision of exactly what we're going to be doing when we get to Florida, and we'd love for you to come down and hear that. The last thing um, on the table out there, for those of you that are not going down to the, the luncheon, where all of the brochures and things are, there is a sheet like this. This is a prayer sheet for Palmwood Church, and I would be tremendously blessed if there were none left by the end of the day. Uh, if you could grab one of those, and, and I made them so they could stick right in your Bible. They're just the perfect size to stick right in there, and if you would pray for us, we'd appreciate that. Thank you so much. 
please stand and we'll close in worship.